I became very ill. Stage four acute myeloid leukemia. Crystal Osha of Orlando, Florida, who we talked to today on Skype, only had a 10% chance to survive. I even made out my living will. I I was prepared. I, you know, had my children prepared. Crystal's last hope, a bone marrow transplant. Doctors said it was the only way she'd live. However, no one in her family was a match. But little did Crystal know her perfect match was 2,800 miles away in Spokane, Washington. Crystal remembers the day she was given life by a complete stranger, a 20-year-old Marine named Jacob Hess. We just stood at the window and we prayed and and, you know, they they brought it in. And within an hour, I was um, receiving Jacob's bone marrow. Today, Jacob's platelets flow through her veins, keeping her alive and healthy. Best of all, she's now cancer free. I am 99% Jacob bone marrow. Um, I have only 1% of me left. He is a part of me. Um, He'll always be a part of me, and I will cherish that gift for the rest of my life. It was Crystal's dream to meet Jacob, but on Thursday she learned that won't happen. Jacob died on January 1st while fighting for our country in Afghanistan. My whole family has just been very devastated by the fact that he, you know, has has died. While they never got to meet, Crystal and Jacob did exchange emails. One of the e emails that Jacob had sent me, at the end of it, it, it was so cute because he said, if you ever need anything, let me know because I am your perfect match. And he put a little smiley face on there. Crystal's determined to not let Jacob's selfless gift go to waste. She's raising her two kids and going to nursing school. And because of Jacob's life, Crystal has hers and a second chance to make the world a better place. So I want to go out and I want to help other other people. You know, he's really inspired me. You see them all the time in Spokane. They're under the freeway. They're on the side of the road asking for your money or they're simply just hanging out here in downtown. But most people in the community don't know what it's like to be in their shoes. And that's why photojournalist Jim Hazelton and I spent a day and night with three homeless people in Spokane. You never know if you're going to be robbed in the middle of your sleep or killed. It's a dangerous life of constant motion. A life of unknowns. Where am I going to eat? How am I going to survive? We get a lot of people that look down at us because of it. And pretty much they, they don't understand how you end up actually here. But for one reason or another, some people in Spokane choose to call the streets home. Hopefully it's a temporary thing. 30-year-old Joaquin King goes by the name Jojo. He came to Spokane for a fresh start, but things didn't turn out as planned. For the last five months, he's been out here. It's pretty much became a way of life now. I've just got accustomed to it now. Jojo and his friends, 23-year-old Bonnie Dobson and 24-year-old Justin Wright are like family, his homeless family. Bonnie's been homeless for six months. Justin, a decade. It's boring, but it's a lot of work at the same time. Their days are centered around food. Who's feeding? What time? What are they serving? Food helps you survive, so if you ain't got the food, it's hard for you to survive. It's a lot of walking and waiting. The three of them, along with their dog, Princess, constantly moving. Probably average maybe 10 to 12 miles a day with my walking. Their eyes always watching the clock. Tonight, they have two feedings. And homemade baked potato salad. The first one at Blessings Under the Bridge. Thank you. Where they get more than just a meal. Guys, leave that too. Oh. After Blessings, it's off to City Gate, where they eat again. It's just Monday and it's the same thing over every day, revolving door. When they need cash. I go up to people and just ask for some change or a couple dollars to get something to eat or some tobacco. They don't call it panhandling. They call it spanging. It works. I remember one time I did three passes at the bar strip and came out with 10 bucks. From sunup to sundown, this is life. It takes a lot more work, a lot more courage, and a, a pretty good sized backbone to actually be able to handle it. Did you ever think you would be homeless? No. They're no different from you or I. 
Some of them have had hard times, so you treat them like human beings. And For Officer Toby Breyer. Hey, Tina. Yeah. How you doing tonight? Interacting with the homeless. Keep them warm. It's a daily part of his job. Chief's idea is he wants to take back downtown. It's where the heart of the city is, and that's what we're working on doing. Over the last few months, the number of cops patrolling downtown has increased from two to seven. The tent city has cleared out. With more manpower, they have more time to dedicate to the homeless. We also had somebody camping out on top of this. We'll contact them. We'll do what we see as the best type of enforcement. Officer Breyer spends a good chunk of his shift driving around, checking out the homeless hotspots in town. How you doing, sir? Spokane Police. Tonight, it's the Sunset Bridge where he finds two people camping out. One of them is about to go from the streets to the jail. Vicky, you do have a warrant and I am going to arrest you on it. Vicky follows orders and doesn't cause any problems. Okay. Go ahead and put your hands behind your back for me. Officer Breyer says that's usually the case. Uh, they're fine with us now, now that we began to interact with them more and more. They're... As for Jojo, Bonnie and Justin, they don't sleep at a homeless shelter because they all can't stay together. So this is their home under the Maple Street Bridge. You get used to it. They've got art on the walls from all the graffiti, a bathroom called the pit, and a concrete slab to sleep on. I've got about 35, 40 blankets at camp right now. You just gotta trust your belongings to help you survive. They trust their belongings and each other, but that's it. Just the other day, Jojo was attacked while he was sleeping at camp. Some strange guy came up and just hit me a couple of times in the back of the head and I rolled over and just started defending myself. From now on, they've made a rule. No one can be at camp alone. Soon, they'll move on to a different place in town. They don't ever stay at one camp for long, always moving. Why don't they get out? What's holding them back? If I could get a job and I could hold the job, get the money up, get my apartment, and it's still afford to the department. Yeah, I'll be off the streets. Jojo says he's tried to find work. Tough, when you don't have a permanent address. As for Bonnie, I can't wait to get out of here. She hopes to be off the streets by the end of March and back in Alaska with her family. If you can handle being out here for at least a year, you could get through just about anything. It's not a glamorous life. It's not a life most people would want. It's not a life they want. Constantly moving hopefully, towards a life off the streets. My wedding day was perfect. It was everything that I could dream for. On June 1st, middle school sweethearts Christy and Ryan Reeser tied the knot exactly seven years after their first date. And I could not wait to see Ryan. In their first year of marriage, the vows are quickly being put to the test. I found this lump. I was like, oh, it's fine, it'll go away. And Ryan told me, he's like, no, you're gonna go see the doctor. 10 days later, Christy and Ryan got the devastating news. You stop listening to what the doctor's saying and you just start running through like, oh my gosh, did she really just tell me I have cancer? Stage two breast cancer. It was just seven weeks before the wedding, but Christy was determined to be a bride and not be bald. And to have my hair for my wedding, that was my biggest thing. The newlyweds didn't have a honeymoon. Three days after getting married, Christy started chemotherapy and shaved off her hair. Ryan did too. She doesn't wear a wig. She goes bald-headed everywhere. Bald is beautiful. From chemo to countless doctor's appointments, Christy's summer hasn't been full of sunshine. But through it all, Christy still has a vibrant smile and an attitude that's incredibly positive. If I go through this and I have a happy spirit, then you know, it helps to keep me happy. It helps me to continue on and to realize that this is just a bump in the road. I swear, everywhere we go, someone stops her and says, um, you're an inspiration. She still has two more rounds of chemo, then a double mastectomy. But Christy is going to kick cancer's butt. In sickness and in health, Ryan will be right by her side. Even though I'm the one facing the chemo and everything, I'm not the only one fighting this fight.